Welcome to Science News. We're here in New Orleans for the 2013 annual fall conference of the Council for High Blood Pressure Research. Uh, I'm here, this, I'm Dr. Fink, I'm chair of the Council for High Blood Pressure Research, and we're here this morning uh, to talk with one of our Goldblatt Award finalists, uh, Dr. Yana Kuras from the University of Kentucky. Just want to mention the Goldblatt Award. It's a very important award of our council. It recognizes a newly independent investigator for their uh, contributions to research as an independent investigator. And also, we, with this award, we're identifying what we think to be people with very high potential to continue to be successful researchers in the field of hypertension. So it's a, quite an honor to be a finalist in this competition. And first, I just want to congratulate you, Dr. Yana Curtis, on being a finalist. I'd really like to hear a little bit about your background, what your educational and research background is, sort of really how you got to be where you are now. Okay, so I did my PhD in France, in uh, Clermont-Ferrand, it was not in Paris, it's a smaller city, but mm -hmm. they have um, a center uh, and um, a center uh, working on nutrition, mm. so I did my PhD in nutrition. I see. And then um, I moved in Lexington in the Graduate Center for Nutritional Science, Excellent. and uh, I was really interested because I'm of my background, so mm -hmm. I came in Lexington in the University of Kentucky. I see. Yeah. And I did a postdoc over there. And how long was your postdoc? Uh, five years. Five years, and so now you're a f assistant professor Correct. at the University of Kentucky yeah. and in the Nutrition Center. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Excellent. And uh, yeah, the, 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 there's two centers we're merging now, mm -hmm. the pharmacology and the Graduate Center for Nutrition and Science, so it's uh, great. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Um, so uh, we'd really like to hear more about the work, the science that, that made you a finalist in the Goldblatt Awards. Could you give us a little bit of a background about, uh, you know, sort of the hypothesis behind your work and then the study itself and what your conclusions were? Yeah, so uh, during the development of obesity, uh, there's an increase uh, of uh, uh, peptide, which is angiotensin 2, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's correlated with an increase of systolic blood pressure, which is a really uh, important uh, problem in, uh, in the world and in USA. So uh, we wanted to know exactly what are the source of uh, angiotensinogen. And uh, so I was working uh, uh, on the liver because it's a great important source of angiotensinogen, but also on adipose tissue be because during the development of obesity, you have an increase in the adipose tissue. Of course. So, um, and it's really fascinating because both of the organs are implicated in hypertension. So we want to know, I'm really interested to know the mechanism, mm -hmm. how, how it's work in order to find new therapeutic uh, uh, way to, to uh, reduce hypertension and uh, of course. pressure and obesity. Very important goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your stu your studies then were in uh, animal model, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. so, yeah. So we develop. Uh, we were using the Crelox technology, mm -hmm. which is a very fascinating technology, and we were removing specifically in different tissue angiotensinogen to target and uh, to understand uh, which source is, uh, is important. Mm -hmm. So we did it in the adipose tissue and we did it in the liver as well. And uh, so we found that both of them are preventing obesity hypertension. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so the during the development of obesity, the mice that have the angiotensinogen deficient, uh, uh, deficiency in the adipose tissue, they are uh, normal tonsils, so mm -hmm. it's coming back to normal, so it's really important uh, finding. Very and then important. Uh, liver, of course, it's 80% of angiotensinogen. So we found also that these mice, they are hypotensive, so there's more problem uh, in, uh, in targeting the liver than the adipose ah. tissue. So uh, Were you surprised when, when knocking out the angiotensinogen in the adipose tissue that the liver didn't just sort of compensate and make more to... to yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the liver, uh, the elevation of angiotensinogen uh, is liver-drived. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are thinking that there are more uh, local uh, renin angiotensin system are really important to uh, manage the fluctuation of blood pressure, and the liver is more maintaining ba baselines uh, sur to survive. I see. So um, then after we can play which organ. Uh, the, the, the balance between yeah, them, yeah. yeah. Are there any, one of the worries anyone ever has about new potential therapies for disease like hypertension, obesity, is adverse effects. Were there any obvious adverse effects in your mice when you would knock out the angiotensinogen and the adipose tissue of the liver? These were adult mice? Yeah, so uh, we fed the mice, uh, so there were eight weeks. So they are adult at this mm -hmm. time, and then we fed them during 16 weeks mm -hmm. to, to develop obesity and hypertension. And after 16 weeks, we 
we are doing our experiment. Mm -hmm. So um, in the adipose the knockout, we didn't find any uh, uh, major problem. Yeah. Uh, in the angiotensinogen, uh, in the targeting of the liver, um, right now the, the, the data that I have, uh, they have a low heart rate, uh, high heart rate high and heart rate. a low weight of the heart. Interesting. So yeah, and so I want to further um, uh, look at that because sure. it's uh, really a new data, so I'm very uh, excited about that. And uh, I thought there is a paper saying that they have some um, pathology in their kidneys. So ah, I, I see. Yeah, when it's the liver. When it's the adipose tissue, I, it's like it's um, maybe more safe mm -hmm. method. Um, because it doesn't affect the whole systemic renin angiotensin system. So that really, really leads me to my what will be my last question mm -hmm. for you. Is, is the potential clinical applications of your work, of course we're always looking for new, effective, and safe ways to manage the cardiovascular complications that go along with obesity, but also obesity itself. Can you envision that your work will have some uh, clinical applicability in the treatment of patients? Um, yes, I think that um, um, Basically, uh, maybe future uh, new therapy, it's just targeting one specific organ and for a specific disease. And uh, for example, uh, if you're targeting angiotensinogen in the adipose tissue, then you prevent hypertension and there's no adverse effect. Mm -hmm. More caution uh, will be, um, uh, has to be done if you're targeting the liver mm -hmm. because of maybe the systemic um, uh, effect of, of this. Uh, so yes, it's. Uh, I, I will uh, like to develop <laughs> some new therapy. And Do does human fat make angiotensinogen? Have you yes. done work in human fat? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and I hope to develop some uh, uh, collaboration uh, mm -hmm. to work on that. And uh, and I have a SDG now. So Ex excellent. That's very exciting. I was going to ask you who supported your work. So um, yeah. So Dr. Cassis, uh, which is a chair of the Department of Pharmacology mm -hmm. now. Uh, when I came in Lexington, uh, she's, uh, she um, welcomed me d and I did my postdoc Excellent. with her and I just um, become an assistant professor in huh. April and then in July I have the SDG so I'm starting a new uh, project. Excellent, uh, excellent. Um, well congratulations uh, on that. You. What's the new project then? So uh, it's a little bit different, I mean it's, sti it's still on obesity during the development mm -hmm. uh, obesity because I still want to um, work on that and uh, I'm targeting the pro-renin renin receptor on the, um, uh, in the adipose tissue because okay. I think that it can be um, the reason why we have so many differences in angiotensinogen regulation between liver and adipose ah, tissue. So. Very, very interesting. So very, very interesting. Thank you very much for taking the time to come to meet with us. I really appreciate it. And again, congratulations on being a finalist for the Goldblatt Award. Just want to mention those, all of you viewing uh, our broadcast today that uh, this kind of exciting science is uh, always at the meeting, always at our council meeting in the fall. We have another meeting coming up in next year in September in San Francisco, so please come and join us to uh, take advantage of the kind of science we're able to present to, uh, to the, uh, our colleagues uh, around the world. Thank you.